Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's continue our discussion about uh, you know rings of functions of uh, varieties. Okay, so uh, let me recall uh, the picture as it was uh, explained in the previous lecture. So on on one side we have the uh, th that is the geometric side. Uh, we have uh, if you want uh, uh, affine varieties. and uh, on the on the commutative algebraic side uh, we have the so called rings of functions on uh, affine varieties. So, uh, let me recall you see an, uh, an affine variety is supposed to be a closed irreducible closed subset of some affine space okay and affine space is uh, of dimension n is just uh, k n k cross k cross k n times given this Zariski topology alright uh, and by the Zariski topology of course if you recall it is just the topology that declares closed sets to be common 0 loci uh, of a bunch of polynomials okay in the appropriate number of variables. So, uh, so here uh, on this side you have closed subsets irreducible closed subsets of affine space. So, standard examples are affine space itself is irreducible of course we are always working with k an algebraically closed field k is an algebraically closed field okay if you give if you take the affine n space then uh, the the ring of functions uh, for uh, affine space is a of a n which is the polynomial ring in n variables over k okay. So, the so that is this uh, uh, there is this uh, association that takes to every affine variety its ring of functions. And of course, the functions we are interested in are polynomial functions, right? And uh, more generally, if you give me uh, yeah, an, uh, a closed uh, subset of uh, an affine space, which is uh, uh, also irreducible, this is what a general affine variety is. The general affine variety is defined to be an irreducible closed subset of some affine space, and for such an irreducible closed subset what is the uh, ring of functions the ring of functions is defined to be the ambient ring of functions the ring of functions uh, sorry the uh, that is the ring of functions on the ambient space the larger space in which x sits namely the ring of functions on this divided by 
the ideal of uh, uh, that subset and the ideal of this subset uh, mind you uh, is the ideal of functions uh, namely the ideal uh, of uh, polynomials uh, which vanish on all of x okay and uh, you know that that is prime uh, because x is irreducible all right and therefore this quotient is uh, an integral domain okay uh, because you are going uh, you are taking the polynomial ring and you are going modulo prime ideal okay basically you are going modulo prime ideal so the result the quotient is an integral domain and you see this this closed uh, this irreducible closed subset here uh, shows up as a, as a quotient here this is a quotient and this is just the go you are just going mod uh, the ideal of x okay and uh, well see the, the point is that uh, uh, what is actually happening is uh, whatever is happening here is on the geometric side is uh, an exact image of mirror image of what is happening here on the automotive algebraic side and algebraic geometry derives from this translation basically okay. Uh, so that problems on geometric problems can be translated into commutative algebraic problems and vice versa and you, can, you and a problem that you cannot solve here maybe you can solve it here and the other way around okay so um so the first thing i want to tell you is uh, uh, of course on this side it's affine varieties on this side it's rings of functions on affine varieties and i'm saying that there's some kind of a bijection so there is also a map that is going on this side about which I uh, I mentioned uh, the existence of but I did not tell you what it was in the last lecture I would like to tell you what that is and that is the uh, that is the so called max spec. So I will come to that um, and these two put together will tell you that whatever is happening here uh, and uh, is exactly a mirror image of what is happening on this side okay and uh, 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 so uh, let me recall see for example uh, if you uh, have that x is a geometric hypersurface that corresponds to uh, on this side x being uh, x being an uh, a, a hypersurface in the in the the commutative algebraic sense okay and in fact on this side I should not write x actually I should write something about its ring of functions and uh, the fact that x is a hypersurface in the commutative algebraic sense is the fact uh, uh, is that x is uh, uh, a hypersurface in the commutative algebraic sense is something that is defined by a single equation so it is a locus defined by a single equation and so i of x so the condition is i of x is generated by a single polynomial f and so x is just the 0 locus of a single polynomial and since i of x is prime okay it will force that f has to be an irreducible polynomial and it has to be irreducible non constant polynomial okay. So that is the condition for uh, hypersurface in the commutative algebraic sense okay and x being a geometric hypersurface is what is the geometric meaning of being a hypersurface the geometric meaning is via dimension so uh, uh, it means that uh, dimension of x is actually uh, uh, one less than the dimension of the uh, the ambient space the bigger space so it's it's n minus 1 okay where n is the dimension of the larger space and of course here by dimension i mean the topological dimension all right and we saw last time that these two are equivalent and that was basically uh, an application of uh, both the Krull's uh, Haupt ideal sets and uh, also uh, the important theorem that you know an, uh, and uh, that a Noetherian integral domain is a uh, UFD a unique factorization domain, domain if and only if every ideal uh, every prime ideal of height 1 is principal okay. So, uh, so you know for both these theorems we do need that the ring involved is Noetherian okay Krull's principal ideal theorem says that if you take a Noetherian ring and you take an element f in a uh, in the Noetherian ring which is not a unit and it's not and it's also not a zero divisor okay then uh, every minimal prime ideal that contains this element has height 1 
okay that is Krull's principle ideal theorem and uh, uh, so the geometry content is that uh, you know while both these theorems I tell you that these two are actually equivalent okay and uh, the other beautiful thing is that uh, you can uh, so you can ask the question of uh, when uh, the ring of functions on an affine variety is a unique factorization domain and the answer to that is that uh, you know you take any affine variety and look at its ring of functions the condition that uh, it is a unique factorization domain is uh, equal to saying that every geometric uh, hypersurface in in that variety namely every codimension one uh, irreducible subset is defined by a single equation okay that is a that is a geometry translation of the fact that every uh, 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 prime ideal of height one is principal okay the prime ideal of height one condition tells you that the dimension of your uh, locus goes down by one okay it is that is it has co dimension one it goes down by one from the dimension of the bigger space in which you are considering it okay and so you know therefore uh, the geometric content is that if you have a unique factorization domain uh, I mean when when are uh, rings of for which affine varieties are the rings of functions unique factorization domains they are precisely the uh, affine varieties for which every uh, co dimension one irreducible subset is defined by the locus of a single equation that is what uh, that is the geometry content okay so this is one particular example so uh, you know I still uh, I want to say a little bit more uh, going from this side to that side so you see uh, let me give you two examples one is the let me take the two plane okay so the two plane uh, there are many avatars of the two, two plane so for example I can take uh, well I can look at A2 okay this is a two plane okay and if I look at the uh, corresponding uh, you know uh, 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 ring of functions I will get the, uh, the uh, uh, A of A2 k which is just k uh, if you want x1 x2 okay it is a polynomial ring in two variables then I can also consider you know two, uh, two, two plane as if you want the x y plane in three in three space that is also after all the two plane only that you are considering it in a bigger space so you know for example you can take x y plane uh, in a 3 a 3 k that means you know you are looking at three dimensional space k cross k cross k you are calling the coordinates as uh, x y z if you want and then you are looking at the x y plane that is also uh, the plane two plane anyway and if you look at the ring of functions on this you will get a of uh, you know uh, well let me uh, uh, let me write that a of x y plane in uh, 3 space what am I going to get I am going to get the ring of functions on a irreducible closed subset is defined to be the ring of functions of the ambient space which in this case is the affine 3 space which is so it is a of a 3 okay modulo the ideal of that irreducible subset okay that is the definition so it is it goes by model you have to go modulo the ideal of the x y plane and if you see you see what this will give you is you will get a of a 3 is of course k x y z because we uh, we agreed to call uh, the the coordinates on this three plane as x y z okay and it is x y plane you are interested in and uh, what is the what are the functions that vanish on the x y plane it is the z coordinate where z x y plane is simply written as z equal to 0 and so it is actually the ideal of x y plane the x y plane is just the ideal generated by z okay and you so it is it is the polynomial ring k x y z model of z which is actually isomorphic to k x y okay so uh, and so you see if you watch these two are one and the same geometrically they are it is just the two plane here it is a two plane considered uh, as uh, as the whole space and here is a two plane considered as the x y plane okay and see what is happening on this side what you get is these two are isomorphic 
you get that the ring of functions are isomorphic this is also a polynomial ring in two variables that is also a polynomial ring in two variables so they are isomorphic okay. So, so let me give you one more example in fact let me take uh, uh, more generally you can take some plane uh, a more general plane in uh, in n space okay if you take a, a, a two plane in a n okay and if you associate to it the ring of functions with a of the two plane uh, uh, plane uh, in n space okay what will happen is you will still find that it is still isomorphic to the polynomial ring in two variables it will happen. So what what is it that I am trying to say I am trying to say uh, that, that geometrically you are looking only at the two plane whether you are looking at the two plane completely the two plane itself or whether it is embedded as a as the x as a plane in three space or whether it is embedded as a plane in n, n space no matter how you look at it this definition of the affine coordinate ring uh, the ring of functions uh, on an affine variety this definition gives you isomorphic rings it does not give you something different and the fact that you all the three cases give you up to isomorphism the same ring is an indication of the fact that you are looking at the same geometric object you are looking at only the plane okay. So the moral of the story is that the ring of functions okay is go is it really captures the object that you that you uh, that you are looking at it is not going to change just because it is not going to distinguish between uh, a two plane in three space or a two plane in n space because the two plane is always a two plane there is nothing different geometrically about it the only thing is the way it is embedded right. So the moral of the story is this is this gives you one uh, rationale as to why we should study rings of functions the ring of functions uh, is a geometric a geometrically it is an intrinsic uh, object when you take a uh, an affine variety okay intrinsic means up to isomorphism it depends only on the affine variety not on where you see it okay. So that is one of the justifications of studying rings of functions on affine varieties so I should I should uh, now tell you that you know there is another common name in the literature uh, people also use the word coordinate affine coordinate ring okay so people instead of saying rings of functions on affine varieties people people just use the word affine coordinate ring so this is this is a word that uh, you will often see in the literature okay so the the moral of the story is that uh, so you see so you can expect what does this isomorphism here correspond to here what it is telling you is you know you should expect that this should be isomorphic to this and this should be isomorphic to this and this isomorphism as varieties as a fine varieties is precisely what is getting translated on that side as isomorphism of their affine coordinate rings that is what you should expect and that is exactly what happens in fact uh, this uh, uh, this association is actually an equivalence okay I will tell you uh, how it is an equivalence how strong it is on this side if you put uh, if you take only isomorphism classes of affine varieties okay then on this side you should put isomorphism classes of such rings affine coordinate rings okay then this is a bijective uh, uh, association because if you change the affine variety up to isomorphism then its affine coordinate ring will also change only up to isomorphism okay that is one point then the other point is if anything that you that uh, that happens on this side has a meaning on that side so a closed sub variety corresponds to a quotient okay suppose I do not uh, take the set of isomorphism classes of affine varieties on this side and there also I do not take the set of uh, isomorphism classes of affine coordinate rings okay then if you give me a closed uh, sub variety like this 
this closed subvariety will automatically correspond to a quotient. So you see this closed something being a closed subset of the uh, irreducible closed subset of the of another thing that will this is called a closed immersion okay the word used is a closed immersion some affine variety being thought of as a closed irreducible subset of some other affine variety okay. This closed immersion reflects on this side as a quotient okay. So quotients here correspond to closed immersions okay it does not stop there uh, isomorphisms here correspond to isomorphisms there that is exactly what we saw here okay more what do open subsets correspond to okay the beautiful answer is open subsets here will also correspond to ring homomorphisms here in fact they will be k algebra homomorphisms and you know what they will be localizations. So the beautiful thing is closed uh, closed immersions will correspond to quotients open immersions namely the inclusion of an open uh, inclusion of a variety a variety being sitting inside another bigger variety is an open subset okay uh, and this is something that I will explain soon okay that will show up there as a localization of rings okay. So uh, and this is a very beautiful uh, uh, equivalence of categories so I should only tell you one thing what is uh, what are the objects here so what are uh, so if I say they are just coordinate rings of uh, affine affine coordinate rings of affine varieties that means I am giving a definition here which actually depends on this side but if I want to give a definition only on this side then the correct definition is these what you should put on this side is finitely generated k algebras which are integral domains okay. So what you should put on this side okay so on this side so let me write that down uh, somewhere here um, I am a little short of space but anyway let me write it so let me write it here finitely generated k algebras which are integral domains so what does this mean this means they are algebras of this form k of some polynomial ring k of y1 etc ym modulo a p where p is a prime ideal so let me write it below so that I can modulo p where p is a prime okay and uh, you know uh, uh, how it is going to go from here to here okay do not worry about this max spec for the moment but you know what uh, you know the object on this side for which this is the affine coordinate ring you know what it is it is actually a m okay whenever you write a quotient I told you it is the affine coordinate ring of the 0 locus of the denominator which has to be a prime ideal considered in the ambient space for which the functions are the numerator. So the numerator here is a polynomial ring in m variables that is a ring of functions on a m okay and p is a prime ideal there therefore it is 0 locus will be an irreducible closed subset of a m and the that therefore defines an uh, a closed sub variety of a m okay m dimensional affine space over k and each ring of functions will be precisely this. So you know this this will correspond you know see if I draw a uh, an arrow like this this will correspond to uh, well let me write it here uh, it will be some uh, this will correspond to z of p as an irreducible closed subset of a m that is what this corresponds to okay. So on this side what I am putting is so called finitely generated k algebras which are integral domains and the definition of that is actually it is simply a polynomial ring in finitely many variables over k modulo a prime ideal I mean this prime ideal comes because I want the quotient to be an integral domain so you have to go modulo a prime and finitely generated is because it should be quotient of a polynomial ring in finitely many variables because the yi's 
they generate the polynomial ring in m variables therefore their images in the quotients namely the yi bars okay the cosets yi plus p which are the yi bars in the quotient ring they will generate the quotient ring as a as an algebra over k okay so that is why this is a finitely generated algebra over k which is an integral domain and conversely every such algebra is defined to be something like this okay so 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 what I am trying to say is we have an equivalence of actually categories okay we have an equivalence of categories on this side you have affine varieties and morphisms between affine varieties on that side you have these finitely generated k algebras which are integral domains and the morphisms are k algebra homomorphisms and it is a it is an equivalence of categories okay I will explain all these things uh, soon but there is one thing I should say at the outset I have been saying morphisms I, I said isomorphisms of varieties I said morphisms of varieties so that is something that I have to define I have to define what is uh, a morphism between one morphism from one variety to another okay so that is going to come very soon but I am saying that this is the uh, general picture in which you get a complete equivalence of categories and uh, that in that sense everything that is that you see here is actually a mirror image of that and, and vice versa okay. So all this tells you that uh, studying the studying the affine uh, affine coordinate ring the ring of functions on affine variety is a very important thing because that captures everything okay whether you look at it as uh, coordinate rings of affine varieties or whether you look at on this side the affine varieties it is one and the same because of this equivalence. So this is I, why I am saying all this is I am saying this is uh, this is uh, this is why uh, you can say that studying rings of functions on affine varieties is important and it also kind of you know uh, uh, it, it also justifies in a way Felix Klein's statement that you know the geometry of a space is controlled by the functions on the space okay so you know somehow these functions they control the geometry mind you we had only affine n space which came from kn and all we normally know about kn is only it is an n time only that it is an n dimensional vector space over k but we forgot the vector space structure and the geometry came in by looking at polynomial functions and using them to define the Zariski topology. So you see the even the topology on this side was gotten by functions on that side you must understand and the beauty is the functions on this side completely capture the topology okay they in fact not only the topology the, the most deepest statement is that everything the functions on this side completely capture the geometry on this side. So geometry at the at the lowest level is the topology then the next level is more deeper properties like the manifold theoretic properties smoothness regularity and things like that okay. So everything on this side e geometric side is captured by the, the competitive algebra which is the ring of functions okay. So this all this is to tell you why it is so important to do to study rings of functions okay. So I will elaborate on all this or whatever I said very soon but now what we will do is uh, I wanted to um, you know um, okay so let me tell you about this this max spec thing so let let me uh, explain this max spec uh, that is the arrow that goes from this side to that side all right so uh, um, so you know uh, so let me again repeat the following thing I will show later on that if you have two affine varieties on this side and you have a morphism that will give rise to a morphism in the reverse direction of their coordinate rings and conversely conversely if you have two coordinate rings of two affine varieties and you have a k algebra homomorphism that will give rise to a morphism in the other direction okay that this will be a pakka equivalence and under this equivalence a closed subset will correspond to a quotient and open subset will correspond to a localization okay this is what will happen you can see the morphisms are going in the uh, this is an arrow reversing equivalence because you see from x to an if you have a closed embedding okay then you have from the functions on an to functions on x this is just restriction this is just restriction of functions which is seen as a quotient okay. So this is what will happen and when if you have u uh, an affine variety u sitting as an open subset of a n what will happen is from a of a n to a of u you will get a homomorphism which will be actually localization of this ring at a suitable multiplicative subset in the sense of commutative algebra 
okay so everything on this side will translate to something on this side and conversely okay but all that needs to be proved we are going to prove it okay but I am just telling this to you in at the outset to tell you that why it is so important to uh, study uh, rings of functions on affine varieties okay which are of this form finitely generated k algebras which are integral domains. Now I will go one step further what I am trying to do is to go one step further and say that suppose I forget the picture on this side suppose I completely forget affine space I forget the points on affine space I completely forget everything suppose I have only uh, only the functions suppose I had then from the functions I can get back my space okay that is what this arrow from this direction to that direction is all about that is just from the functions I can cook up the space that means the whole space is already here in the functions okay and that is a much stronger uh, proof uh, of the veracity of the statement of Felix Klein that the geometry of the space is not only so you know what he said is geometry of a space is controlled by the functions on the space but more seriously if you give me the functions then I can give you the space I can cook up the space from the space of function from the if I know the functions on a space then I know the space I can construct the space from its functions okay it is a very very deep thing so that is what this max spec does and that is what I want to explain so what I will do is I will start with uh, something that you must have seen in a course in commutative algebra but nevertheless it is not very difficult to uh, recall these things uh, so you know you start with R a commutative ring with 1 so what you do is uh, you, you look at spec R this is called the spectrum of R Uh, uh, in fact it is called sometimes it is also called the prime more explicitly as the prime spectrum of R and this is supposed to be the set of all prime ideals in R okay so what you do is you look at the set of prime ideals of R okay and regard each prime ideal not as a prime ideal regard it as a point so this square bracket script P is supposed to tell you that you think of uh, here you are thinking of uh, the prime ideal P as a point in spec R when you think of it as a point in spec R you are not thinking of it as a prime ideal inside R you are thinking of it as a point on a space okay so the spectrum is just the points which correspond to prime ideals okay and then so you should not confuse this with uh, equivalence class because normally you know you put a square bracket around an element to say that it is equivalence class of that element so you should not confuse it with that there is no equivalence class it is just uh, to distinguish between the prime ideal as a subset of R and the prime ideal as a point of spec R they are different okay so my space is spec R now the spec R will become a topological space okay how so there is a Zariski topology on this just like you have a Zariski topology on affine space you have a Zariski topology on spec R and in fact uh, you can say both ways this is inspired by that and that is also inspired by this okay it depends on where you start okay they are equally one the same so uh, uh, so let me so let me define this Zariski topology on spec R is given by taking uh, sets of the form Uh, Z of I okay so uh, defined to be equal to the set of all P in spec R such that P uh, contains I uh, where I in R is an ideal to be closed sets. So, so you see the Zariski topology is defined like this the Zariski topology is defined as the uh, to be uh, it is defined by specifying collection of closed sets and what are the closed sets the closed sets correspond they, they come out of ideals ideals of R you take an ideal I of R immediately you can write down the closed set Z of I okay which you should think of as a 0 set of I okay if you compare with the Zariski topology 
on the affine space and the 0 set of i is all those prime ideals it is all those points which correspond to the for which the corresponding prime ideals contain i okay this is the this is the way it is defined and you can check that this satisfies the condition uh, uh, conditions for a topology namely sets of this form uh, satisfy the axioms for closed sets in a topology and you get you thus spec r becomes a topological space okay and then you see uh, you can also check uh, uh, you can also check that you know if you have uh, if you give me uh, uh, given a ring homomorphism uh, f from r1 to r2 okay so r1 and r2 are commutative rings with one and f is a ring homomorphism from r1 and r2 uh, then uh, the the map spec f going from spec r2 to spec r1 which is given by give me a prime ideal of uh, r2 and simply send it to its inverse image which is a prime ideal of r1 okay if you give me a ring homomorphism from r1 to r2 then it induces a map in the reverse direction on the spectra on the prime spectra and that is simply given by pulling back prime ideals because you know the inverse image of prime ideal in a ring homomorphism is again a prime ideal it is not true for maximal ideals but it is true for prime ideals inverse image of maximal ideal need not be maximal but inverse of image of a prime ideal is always a prime ideal okay. So what will happen is well uh, the fact is you get this map uh, that is not the point the point is this is now a map of topological spaces see it is a map between two topological spaces the most obvious thing we can expect is that it should be continuous and it is okay so this map is continuous so this is another uh, fact that you can that you should have come across in a course in competitive algebra if you have not you can it is very easy to check okay and uh, in fact uh, uh, what happens is uh, if you look at uh, so so uh, so let me uh, maybe I will put a star here uh, I will put another star here then here is so it is like a bulleted list so uh, but instead of bullets I am using stars so here the third thing I want to say is that what about uh, 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 what about a closed subset like this okay what about a closed subset like this so the uh, so what I want to say is that z of i so if you take uh, consider uh, uh, r to r mod i the the canonical uh, so I am writing C A N for the canonical quotient map from r to r mod i okay then if you look at spec of that which goes from spec r mod i to spec r okay because you know I have already told you if you have a ring homomorphism from one ring to the other you are going to get a map on the spectra in the reverse direction in particular you take the ring homomorphism to be the <coughs> canonical ring homomorphism that you get from a ring to its quotient then the corresponding map on spectra what will it be this will actually identify spec r mod i with the closed subset z of i in spec r so what will happen ident so identifies uh, spec r mod i with z of i so mind you z of i is a subset of spec r by definition it is the closed subset of spec r because of the the risky topology I have defined on spec r and spec r mod i the image of spec r mod i under this is identified with that okay so in other words uh, z of i is also spectrum of a ring the, the model of the story is that the 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 uh, uh, the subset closed subset z of i also is a spectrum so every uh, 
uh, we, we define a closed subset inside a spectrum and it turns out that every closed subset itself is a spectrum can be identified with the spectrum what is the spectrum it is a spectrum of the quotient by that ideal okay and in some sense you know you must think of it like this you must think of it think like this if uh, if r is thought as a, of as the ring of functions on spec r okay abstractly then r mod i is a ring of functions on z of i which is identified with spec r mod i okay so you see r is a ring of functions on spec r all right functions in what sense is something that has to be made formal uh, more precise but do not worry about it r is a ring of functions on spec r then what is the ring of functions on z i it is r mod i okay because spec of r mod i can be identified with z of i okay and there is one more thing you see what is the situation with respect to localization. So, two particular kinds of ring homomorphisms are are quotients and localizations okay and so what happens with localization consider uh, r to s inverse r l uh, which is a localization of r with respect to uh, a multiplicative subset Uh, S inside R. So, if you remember in commutative algebra, given a ring R, we define what is meant by a multiplicative subset. A multiplicative subset is a subset which does not contain 0 and which for which uh, which is closed under multiplication. So, if there are 2 elements in that set, then their product is also in that set, okay. And, uh, and we can in commutative algebra form the localization of r with respect to the multiplicative subsets which is just inverting the elements of the multiplicative subset. So, S inverse r which is the localization of uh, multiplication by uh, localization by the multiplicative subs subset sometimes it is also written as r uh, bracket S inverse okay. So, it can be thought of as a polynomial uh, it, it can be thought of as polynomial uh, ring in r in as many variables uh, gi given by reciprocals of elements of S modulo the natural relations that come because of the elements of S being inside R okay and uh, that is the reason why one writes it uh, writes S inverse R as R square bracket S inverse but essentially it means that you are just inverting S. So you know the simplest case is if you take R to be for example if you take R to be integers and you take S to be the complement of uh, the complement of 0 okay then S inverse R will just be rational numbers more generally if you take an if r is an integral domain and s is the complement of 0 which is a prime ideal okay the complement of a prime ideal is always a, a multiplicative subset and localization by that is always going to give you uh, a localization and in this case uh, complement of 0 if you localize an integral domain at 0 at the complement of 0 then you are going to invert that means you are inverting everything outside uh, which is different from 0 and that means you are forming the free field of fractions. So forming the field of fractions is a very special case of localization localization is a generalization of that you would have seen this in commutative algebra but the fact is that if you take this localization map okay then what does it correspond to in the spectrum at the level of the spectrum then uh, spec L will go from spec S inverse R to spec R okay you will get this map let me let me take a particular case put for example uh, S to be uh, just the multiplicative subset <coughs> given by a single element R R squared where uh, R is in R is uh, 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 not nilpotent okay. I do not I, I want R to be uh, the element R in R small r in capital R to be nilpotent because I do not want some power of it to be 0 if some power of it is 0 then the multiplicative set contains 0 and I do not want 0 in the multiplicative set there are some books which say that uh, 0 is allowed in the multiplicative set but then the convention is that the localization becomes a 0 ring and uh, nobody wants to study the 0 ring for as far as geometry is concerned. So we always never want 
uh, 0 to come inside the multiplicative set that is the reason why I do not want small r to be nil potent okay. And then uh, in that case uh, 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 we normally write S inverse r as r localized at small r okay. Uh, we also write it as r bracket small r inverse some people write as r of 1 by r okay these are various notations okay and the fact is spec and spec of uh, if you calculate spec of rr what you will get is you will simply get all those prime ideals the points corresponding to prime ideals such that the prime ideal does not contain small r okay and this this uh, so you will get this identification okay and this is just complement of z of r, z of r in spec r. So you see spec r uh, has a Zariski topology as I have explained and then there is the ideal generated by small r okay it is ideal generated by single element r and you take the 0 set of that ideal what is what is the 0 set of that ideal by definition it is all those prime ideals which contain the ideal r but a prime ideal contains the ideal generated by r if and only if it contains r itself. So this is uh, z of r it precisely uh, has for its points those prime ideals which contain small r and what is the complement it is all those prime ideals which do not contain points corresponding to prime ideals which do not contain small r and that is precisely spec r r r capital r sub small r and and how do you get this identification this identification is provided by this map the image of this map the image of spec l in this case identifies spec of s inverse r with uh, this this subset which is an open subset of uh, of spec r okay because it is a complement of a closed set. So the moral of the story is you know the ring of functions on uh, the complement uh, of the locus defined by a single element okay namely the ring of functions on the locus where a single element does not vanish is precisely localization by that element okay which is uh, if you think of small r you know if you think of small r as an element of capital R and if you think of r as the ring of functions on spec r then small r is a particular function and what is z of r you should think of z of r as the locus where r small r vanishes okay and what is its complement its complement is should be the locus where small r does not vanish <coughs> but where small r does not vanish if small r is a function that does not vanish 1 by small r should also be a valid function. So it in other words it tells you that in this locus where small r does not vanish which is an open set the functions are simply given by r of 1 by small r namely it is the functions are of the form some function of some element of r divided by some power of small r which is <laughs> intuitively correct and in fact uh, uh, you get it here okay. So uh, so this <coughs> so this uh, this identification is via L in this case. So the moral of the story is the ring of functions uh, corresponding to a closed subset is given by uh, corresponding to a closed subset given by an ideal is given by the quotient ring and the ring of functions corresponding to an open subset a so called basic open subset where a function does not vanish is simply given by inverting that function that is what it says okay. So this is a uh, this is the background in uh, this is the background from commutative algebra okay and uh, we can use this to uh, go from this side of the diagram to the other side of the diagram which I will uh, which with which I will continue with this in the next lecture okay.